Hi, I'm Tracy Rowling with Tennis Express, and today I have with me Jennifer Dawson. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. I'm so excited to talk to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You're obviously a pickleball professional. You have played several national world renowned tournaments and you also come with a tennis background. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been playing tennis since I was seven. Um, I went to college on a tennis scholarship. I went to University of San Diego, played number one singles and doubles for them for four years. Um, and then after college, I decided to play on the pro tour. Um, and I did that for one year um, and got ranked, I think, 400. And then I started having babies. So I got married a month after college. And, and so that kind of interrupted the, the whole tennis tour thing. But, um, but it was a fun, you know, time in my life. Um, and so we, um, I've been teaching tennis. Uh, for many, many years, probably 30 plus years. Um, and we ended up getting a, pickleball, a tennis club, which we ended up turning into a pickleball club. Um, and it just gradually went slowly in that direction. So we never really planned for that to happen, mm -hmm. but pickleball just got more and more popular. And then it was just growing. And then the tennis was kind of dying down at our club um, and just slowly started by painting some lines and putting some courts in and and now we're almost exclusively pickleball it's amazing yeah that's a great segue into my first question which is how long have you been playing pickleball and um tell us about your your pickleball experience well i've been playing pickleball probably for about six years so what ended up happening is is when we got the club we we're specifically and only tennis and then we had a group of people that came to us and said, hey, can we rent your courts and just tape a couple of lines and, and play some pickleball? Yeah. And a group of maybe 20 people. And um, they started playing. And then my husband started playing. And he just fell in love with it from day one. So for me, it took just a little bit longer to jump full board in um, because I still love tennis. I still competed nationally i did all the national tournaments and played on the world cup team and all of that so it took me just maybe a year longer um to get fully invested into the pickleball um, but it just slowly started growing and growing and we went from uh two tape courts to four tape courts to painting lines on the courts to actually converting courts um you know and we did that sections at a time absolutely um so now we're just all into pickleball. We play tournaments all over the country. Um, my kids play. My son's a professional pickleball as player as well, as well as my husband, Steve. Wow, that's incredible. So is there a lot of crossover between tennis and pickleball? Are you seeing, I mean, like I myself play tennis and I more recently started playing pickleball and I just, I love pickleball. I had my first tournament last week, in fact, um, but oh, I, I love it. And are you thinking from your perspective, how is the crossover from tennis to pickleball? Well, I think it's an easy transition um, at first. So okay. it's, you know, it's a hand-eye coordination, the racquetball, all of that is the same. Um, of course, the ball is different and the paddle and racket is different, but you still have your you know, tennis players still have the ground strokes that you are going to incorporate into your pickleball as well. And then the volleys, but there are slight differences. So initially, I think you're going to automatically be able to play and be pretty good. Um, but on the other hand, you have some bad habits that don't really translate over. So as a tennis player, you first jump in and you're like, okay, I can just drive and whack and hit the crap out of every single ball. Um, but in pickleball, it, it, you can do that on some shots, but on some shots, you're going to have to use a little more finesse and drop and, um, and work the point that way. And sure. so, so that transitions a little bit slower. And also with the volleys, you know, in tennis, you want to be moving forward with your volley. Um, and in pickleball, you don't want to do that because you can't volley in the kitchen. Yeah. So a few little differences. 
I think you have, for me, I, I have found that you have to have a lot more patience in pickleball than sometimes you have in tennis. And that's just from a doubles perspective. <laughs> No, absolutely. You're 100% correct on that. Um, you do, the court is so much smaller than a tennis court, so it's not like you can just blast balls by your opponent, right? Yeah. So you have a lot of strategy involved. You have to work the point. You have to uh, set it up so that you're able, so you're going to really work with the dink shots, trying to move yeah. people around and try to create an opportunity where they might pop it up a little bit where you can attack the ball. Exactly. Um, so you've seen it grow over your six years of playing. Where, what makes it so popular and where is this sport going? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> it has tremendously. Um, I mean, the quality of the players, I mean, and just the number of players have just increased so much. And I think, um, I saw the biggest increase probably over COVID um, because we do have a club. It was unbelievable the number of people that started playing during COVID because you can really go in the gym. Um, so everybody was playing tennis, pickleball and golf, right? Where you could be outside with a lot of fresh air. Um, and I mean, our club is packed 24 hours a day. I mean, there wasn't an hour where a court was free and people were at home, right? Sure. People were at home. So they were able to uh, play all day. Um, and that as well as um, there being more publicity on pickleball. It's been on the morning show. I think it was yeah. on the Today Show. Um, I just came back from a tournament from New York at, that was played at the um, Billie Jean King um, USTA Tennis Center, and I believe there was like an exhibition at the New York Stock Exchange. Um, so, yeah, so I mean, I think it's being publicized and people are hearing about it and more and more people are playing and it just keeps growing. Exactly. Um, and yeah, and the quality of play is incredible because before people would say, oh, it's just for old people, you know, when I can't play tennis anymore, then I'll start playing, but now, if you watch, there's so many young athletic people that play, um, especially in the professional divisions. A lot of them are ex-athletes, um, ex-college players, ex-pros. Um, and so just the level is going up. So, but you, the great thing about it is you can go all the way from, you know, my mom plays four or five days a week and she's 80. So you, I mean, you have people that are in their 80s and 90s playing all the way down to, you know, little kids. So it's, so special how you have such a wide range of people that can play the sport. Absolutely. Um, what kind of equipment do you recommend for the pickleball beginner? Like somebody that wants to get involved and, and sees this video maybe and says, I'm going to check that out. Well, you know, all you need really is um, a paddle. Okay. And just trying it out, you know, I would probably just, pay for a cheap little paddle or borrow someone's paddle just to make sure you like it before you invest the money, right? Sure. On a paddle, um, a ball, and it's just a small little wiffle ball that you use and some court shoes. And you want to make sure you wear court shoes rather than running shoes or um, cross training shoes because you got, because there's a lot of lateral movement. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure you have that ankle stability. Okay, excellent. That's great advice. Now I know you play with Prokenix, and you have how long have you been playing with them, and why did you choose that brand? Well, um, a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, um, my husband designs all the pickleball paddles for Prokenix. Oh my uh, gosh, I had no idea. Yeah, so we actually are in partnership with. Um, the pickleball part of Pro Kinex. Okay. And so we have a licensing deal with them. Um, so that's the number one thing. And the other thing is, is, I mean, it's a phenomenal paddle. My husband, the first one he came up with, it took him two years to just get it right because he's a, he's a great player. And so he designed something that was going to play well. Um, and really probably the most important thing is that it has the kinetic technology that the tennis rackets have. So it helps absorb the vibration and shock 
that goes up into your arm. So not only is it good for helping people with tennis elbow or sore arms or wrists, it's also a preventative, right? Because you're not getting all that vibration going up your arm. Wow, that's, that's amazing. That's, I had no idea. That's awesome. Um, the, I know you coach pickleball as well. Do you have any um, drills or any suggestions for people that want to get better that maybe they're a little bit past the beginner stage? They've been playing a little more frequently and they're like, how do I get better at this game? Do you have any recommendations for those players? Um, absolutely. Um, first of all, I would say if you, yeah, if just to start out, maybe take a private lesson or a group class just to learn the rules and kind of the fundamentals because you want to kind of get started with the right technique, right? Yeah. Um, and, then, and, and I'm not saying that you need to take a bunch, but just kind of, you know, figure out what you need to do. And then you can, there's many drills that you can do on your own. Um, to start, I would say really working on the dinking. Um, it seems simple, but it really is one of the hardest things <laughs> to do in pickleball. Um, and so what you can do with your partner is stand at the kitchen line and dink the ball. So you can go straight ahead, just working on getting that ball back into the kitchen um, without it being too high. Um, and trying to get really consistent at doing that. Because what you want to do is you want to be able to dink it into to the kitchen um, at a place where your opponent can't attack the ball. So really work on that. And then you can work on going diagonally um, cross court. Okay. And you can go ways with that. Uh, and then once you feel comfortable doing that, I would work on the, a third shot draw. So you can go into the mid court, and, and some people call it no man's land. Other people call it land of opportunity. <laughs> Try working on dropping it because the further you go back, the harder it is to drop it into the kitchen. So just and what you can do is have one person at the kitchen line and the other person starting at the kitchen line, but working their way back. So they can try to drop it. If it lands in the kitchen, they, they take one step back, okay. and if don't they stand there and they keep trying until they make it all the way back to the baseline and then all the way up and then you just reverse the rolls and then your partner does this exact same thing and it just gives you a feel for that shot that's an excellent advice excellent suggestions i might even try that myself i'm going to um right. <laughs> so speaking of traveling and all of your tournaments how do you prepare for a match is there a method that you can walk us through well, before a tournament, you know, I'm going to arrange a bunch of practice matches and drill sessions and, um, and match play to kind of get myself, you know, in tuned and, and sharp. Um, but right before a tournament, I really want to make sure that I'm hydrated. So even before the day of play, so even maybe a couple of days before, you want to really make sure you have a lot of water um, and electrolytes to just get your body ready. Uh, make sure you eat healthy um, and then try to get a good night's sleep. And then the day of, you know, you wanna make sure you eat well, you know, stretch out, loosen up and then get a good warm up because you do wanna warm up all your shots um, before you actually play the match. Okay, great advice, great. What's been your most satisfying win? Um, and it doesn't even have to be on the court. This could have been like maybe, uh, you know, um, helping helping train or maybe your experience in college or it, it could be anything. Oh, my gosh. That's such a <laughs> <laughs> wide range. Um, well, you know what? I'll probably just stick with the pickleball portion. Um, I can't think of any specific match, but I would say... I've won the Triple Crown twice, once at the U.S. Open and once at Nationals. And I, and it's not a specific match, but probably that last match, um, that would be the third win, uh, would be the most satisfying. I mean, it, being able to pull that last match out yeah. is, yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Congratulations. I know you won gold very recently at the U.S. Open. What was it, last month in April? Um, 
Yes, I won gold in the women's senior pro doubles and the senior pro mixed doubles. Okay. Two golds. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, is, let's see, I have my questions here. Ooh, watching you and your doubles partner, Cammy, you guys work in tandem and for the, you know, the more, let's say the more advanced uh, pickleball player, how important and critical is footwork? You mentioned that with the tennis shoes and having court shoes, wearing court shoes, making sure that you have because of the lateral footwork, but how important is footwork, the pickleball game? So footwork is incredibly important. It's probably one of the most important parts of the game because if your feet aren't there under you, you're not going to hit a good shot. So you have to really make sure you're moving your feet, you're ready to you hit the ball um, because if your feet aren't under you, then a lot of times you're going to miss that shot or you're going to pop it up where your opponent can um, hit a winner. So it's very important. Um, and then you also want to make sure you're moving with your partner, right? Where you guys are working as a team. So if your partner gets pulled out really wide, you're going to need to move over with your partner to help cover that middle. And cover that gap. And then when your partner comes back, then you're going to shift right back over. Um, but yeah, you always, even if you're not hitting the ball, you want to make sure you're on the balls of your feet, you're moving your feet. Because if it does come to you, you want to make sure that you're ready to hit the ball. Because a lot of times if your, your partner's getting all the balls and, and you're just standing there and then you get your ball, a lot of times if you're not ready, then you're going to miss that ball, right? Yeah. And that's... Yeah, for sure. Um, gosh, I think we've really, you've shared so much. Um, one of my last questions, is there any... Um, Football scoring is so complicated, and is there any tips or something that you can lend us to just kind of understand or maybe like um, get it better, get it, get the scoring down a little bit better? Well, you know what? It's so funny because like scoring is like the hardest thing for people to get grasp. Yeah. Um, you think of it, um, the three numbers, right? So they're like, why in the world are there three numbers, right? So if you think of it as the first number is the server score, right? The second number is your opponent's score. Mm -hmm. And the third number is which server you are. And the reason why you have that third number is both players on your team will serve the ball before it's a side out to the other team. And so that third score is just letting everybody know I'm the first server. So after we lose a point, then my partner gets a chance to serve. Um, or I'm the second server. So once we lose a point on my serve, then it's going to be a side out to, uh, to the other people. Yeah. So if you can think of it that way, then you, that, third number kind of makes sense, right? So Absolutely. it's like, okay, we track so we know when it's a side out. Absolutely. Uh, so I think that's probably the best way to look at it. That's a great, no, that's a great suggestion. Um, is, let's see, is there anything else that you want to share with Tennis Express and all of our viewers? Well, you know what? Pickleball is such a fun sport. I, I recommend everybody, if you haven't already tried it, just to try it. I mean, it's one of the few sports where, you know, you can have a seven-year-old child playing doubles with their parents and their grandparents, maybe their aunt or uncle. I mean, and everybody can have a good time. It's easy to learn. Um, some sports take a little bit longer time before you can actually play the game pickleball. You can, you can learn it that day and start playing and having fun right away. That's so, awesome. But everybody doing that. And it's, it's special to be able to do that with friends and family. And honestly, for me, I've seen that it's social, it's competitive. You can do it as a great workout. Um, you know, you, you don't always have to have it organized like um, the places that I've played. It's kind of like a drop-in or an open court where you just go and, you know, you kind of rotate in, if you will. 
and where tennis, you definitely have to have some somebody lined up to be on the other side of the court. <laughs> That's absolutely 100% correct. It's way more social. Um, at our club, you know, a lot of people show up at coolers, and so they play, they socialize, they mix around, they have drinks afterwards, and um, and it just lends to that social aspect. Yeah. Um, like you said, it's a, easier to get a game. So first of all, you know, a lot of clubs or parks or uh, places where you play have open play, like you mentioned, and you just show up. You're like, okay, you know, you can show up by yourself without a match and you just, you know, challenge onto a court and play with a bunch of different people. And so it is, it's much easier to get a game. You don't always have to have things set up. You can set things up if you want, but if you want to just jump in and, and play with a bunch of different people, then, you know, you're able to do that. So it is, it's much easier. It's more social. Um, and you do, you get great exercise and it's a huge, um, different spectrum of levels, right? Like you said, you could have someone that's older and might not move that well, but they're out there getting fresh air, they're getting exercise and having fun and socializing yep. to, to the people that are pros at it. Yep. And they're at the top level, right? So, so that's what's so special about pickleball. It is a great game. I see it growing exponentially, even though it's already grown so much over these past two years. So very exciting. It is very exciting. So it'll be interesting to see um, where it ends up. Hopefully, you know, it can be a college sport. Oh my gosh, uh, yeah. Maybe in the Olympics. Oh. I mean, that would be phenomenal, right? That so, would be amazing. I mean, the way we're going, I, I think it's going to take a little time, but I think we can get there. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, um, okay, so I'm going to conclude this part and then we can talk a little bit more, but what um, apparel line and shoes do you wear? Do you wear apparel and shoes that are sponsored? Um, I wear um, Chibili okay. clothing, mm -hmm. and they're a modern pickleball clothing line, beautiful clothes. Okay. Um, and so, yes, they, they sponsor me, and I do wear their clothing. Shoes, um, I wear Asics. Okay. And um, I use the ProKinex pickleball paddle. Sounds great. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I'm so grateful that you could spend the afternoon and some time with us today. And from on behalf of Tennis Express and myself, thank you so much, Jennifer Dawson, professional pickleball player and uh, pro coach, mom, uh, tennis, a uh, world-renowned tennis athlete. And uh, just appreciate your time today. Well, thank you, Tracy. I really appreciate you having me on. It's been fun chatting with you. Yeah, absolutely.